and welcome to Mark's Madness. We are back for another season alongside Mark Miller. I'm Matt Finkel. Mark, what an exciting time of year. Football is back, and we're so excited to be able to break it all down for you. And we even have crisp weather out there, just like the fall. It really I'm, does feel I'm, like unlike the fall. most August, but yeah, football time, it's ready to go. I'm, I'm excited. Well, before we turn our attention to 2015, let's go back to 2014. Mm -hmm. Lots to talk about, lots to celebrate in the yeah, area. Yeah. Three state champs all coming from the Midwest Athletic Conference. And that's something. We talk a lot about the MAC around here and how good a conference it is, but around the state it is known as the best conference. And this year, first time ever, three teams out of the same conference win state championships. What a phenomenal year for those schools, that league in our area. Coldwater in D5, Minster in D6, mm -hmm. Marion Local in D7. Coldwater's now won three in a row. <laughs> Marion Local's won four in a row. Yep. For Minster, it was their first since 1989, yeah. so a yeah. bit of a discrepancy between mm -hmm. how often they win, but it doesn't make it any less special for anybody. That's right. The dream season for Garen Stokes and his guys from Minster and Eli Wolf came up huge down the playoff stretch, and, and just, a, a, you know, how can they, can they back that up? I mean, can they get that confidence and keep going? Playing in the MAC, it's easier to win a state championship than win the league. That's right. pretty obvious, right? And Coldwater, of course, Chip Otten down there, they've gone to six finals in a row, carried on what John Reed started. Ridiculous. And, and uh, 187 wins since 2000, most in the state in any division. That's Coldwater dominance in, in high school football. And then Marion Local, they've just won four in a row, 137-game win streak. I mean, they, and, and they have maybe the best all-around player in the area with Hunter Wilker and a lot of other good players back. So no reason these guys can't think that they can compete and repeat. We'll see if they can. Yeah, we'll preview the MAC a little later in the show along with the rest of the leagues and conferences. But let's turn our attention now to 2015. Mm -hmm. We've got some area first-time coaches, some new coaches. Yeah. That seems mm -hmm. like a good place to start. I, by my count, we have eight mm -hmm. in the area first-time mm -hmm. coaches. So I'll read them off for you. Okay. Shawnee's John Carpenter is new. Mm -hmm. Ridgemont's Todd Burris. He's a former assistant there. Corey Rawson's Corey Hefner. Graduated from Wapak and mm -hmm. coached at Paint Valley. Arlington's mm -hmm. Josh McGrain former assistant under longtime coach Dick Leonard. New Bremen's Chris Schmidt, he coached at Bow Fountain previously. Fort Lormie's Whit Parks returns to the area. He used to coach at Minster, yeah. Minster of course. Anna has Nick Marino, who comes from Urbana, and he mm -hmm. coached with Garen Stokes. And then finally, Paulding's Tyler Aaron, a 2009 graduate Dang. of Paulding High School. That's a young man. Yeah. So you got Whit Parks, lots of experience coming back to the area after being at Minster. And Tyler Aaron, a Paulding grad at his high school, just a couple years out of college. So you got both ends of the spectrum there. And, of course, John Carpenter at Shawnee gets a lot of publicity because of the last name and his experience with being a GA at some major colleges. So a good mix of assistants getting their chance, guys moving around to take new jobs. Uh, as always, our coaches in this area are phenomenal. I agree. Imagine this group of eight are going to fall right in line with those guys. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. But like mm -hmm. you said, good to see them get their yeah. chance. Yep. Any rule changes to look forward to this year? Last yeah. year was the big deal about the running clock, mm -hmm. and this year, with they're going to make an announcement, I understand. Yeah. Right? Is that the big, yeah. the big change? Well, it's a point of emphasis, yeah. and they've better defined when the clock stops. Some people weren't sure. Does it stop during timeouts? Does it stop during out-of-bounds? Does it stop after a touchdown? You know, so they've better defined that and delineated that so everybody understands. And then they're going to make an announcement in the stadium so that everybody knows it is a continuing clock and people that aren't really paying attention look up and all of a sudden they've missed half the game, you know, because it's just play, play after play. So... Uh, not much. As far as uh, actual rule changes, six in total, three of them dealing with safety. That's typical these days. Everything's towards safety. Just better uh, defining what is a defenseless player and what is roughing the passer and that kind of stuff. So really nothing major. The major changes this year in high school football came with the limitations on practices, contact, and pads. That was a big deal. And that is awesome. really... Uh, you know, drawn in the, the coaches and what they're able to do. Uh, we're seeing it play out in pro football right now with lots of injuries. We sure hope that doesn't happen at the high school level because these kids aren't battle prepared. It's interesting to hear how that those rules on contact affected some of the coaches in the area. Mm -hmm. Some admitted, yeah, it's tougher. I mean, I yeah. want to get my guy's game ready. Where mm -hmm. others were like, you know what, we're a smaller school, especially for the smaller schools. Mm -hmm. We don't use, we don't get in full contact as much. We're not really yeah. changing anything. Yeah, you know what's ironic in this area is our small schools have larger rosters than the big schools. Yeah, you know that, that's kind of weird. You look at at Coldwater and Marion Local, they run 80 guys out there. Right. You know, and you'll look at the big schools, the WBL schools, and they're running 32, 35. So it, it's it's odd that way. But only in this part of the state does that happen. But, yeah, it's, uh, uh, it'll, it'll be interesting to see. The, the one thing that the limitations, and I'm all for the safety thing like everybody else, but you'd be crazy to say you aren't, right? Right, right, right. Um, but the, the one thing I've noticed is tackling is not nearly as good as it used to be. Yeah. There are lots of missed tackles. And well, that's because you can't, they don't get the they practice. They can't that's practice tackling. Of, right, yeah. but yeah. Like, like you said, safety is a number mm -hmm. one. 
All right, so now we're going to break down a play for you each and every week. We don't have a play to break down quite yet from this season because week one is coming up on Friday. But we're going to go back to last season and take a look at a play from Marion Local versus Columbus Grove. And Mark, why don't you take us through what you see here? All right, well, this is a playoff game, obviously, and you see a little halfback option pass there. Now, that's Hunter Wilker, the guy we just mentioned that got that ball. And he's going to draw a lot of attention because he's one of the guys that the defense has to know where he's at on every play. So you hand it off to him, and of course everybody's going to think he's going to run it. Well, look at the linemen. They stood up. They weren't run blocking. That was a dead giveaway if the defense would have been reading it. But Boy, you task a young kid to read and react, and he's just going to basically react. So that's a good trick play for a touchdown. Here's another one, just a handoff to J.C. Guttemiller. They're fantastic running back the last few years. And you can just see here that speed kills. Man, I've, you never heard a coach say, you're too fast to play for me, you know? And so we go back and we look at this now, just a straight handoff. But look, there's body on body. There's yellow pants on red pants. And then you're going to see... Pretty soon, you're going to see him break outside. That's great lateral cut there, but let's stop it right there and look at the red jerseys and the angle they got. And you think, well, it's going to be a nice game, but they're going to tackle him. No, no, they're going to outspeed him to the sideline. And then look at the big basketball player, Ryan Bruns. He's getting in there. He's working hard, just defending that guy off enough for J.C. to get into the end zone. We look at the other side, and Grove's going to throw it now. Got man coverage, nobody in the hole in the, in the middle of the field. And he just beat a one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to go back and see that again replayed in slow motion. You're going to get to see it was trips to the field. The inside guy runs the chair. The outside guy runs a hitch. The middle guy ends up running a post, getting behind his guy. Great pass. Reed Steck shoulder to David Bogart. Big touchdown made it 14-7 to at that point in the game. Can't wait to watch you break down. You're going to be on the call for many games throughout the season. Yeah. That got me pumped up right there. Well, I'll tell you and what, that's, that's my favorite thing right there is watching film. Right. That's yeah. the regional finals. Yeah. So two very good football oh, yeah. teams executing yeah. at a very high level yeah. and a lot of talent on the field there, too. Yeah. It's fun to watch sure it back. Was. Yep. All right. So now that we do, we've done that and you can look forward to breaking down more plays with Mark Miller every week here on Mark's Madness. Let's go league by league All right. and see what we've got this year. What okay. can we expect? And we'll start in the Western Buckeye League in that it's interesting when we did our warm-up previews, and you can catch all of those online in the WOSN. They're great, by the, the way. I watched playlist. every single one of them. 45 we, of them. Babies. My wife thought I had left her or something. <laughs> 45, yeah. 45, 15-minute shows for you mm -hmm. to take in all before Friday. Now, <laughs> the Western Buckeye League, when we talked to the mm -hmm. coaches, a lot of them said this league feels wide open. Wapak. Mm -hmm. 10-0 last year in the regular season, and they won the league. Yep. So they've got to be the favorite, yeah. but it does feel like a, a league that is up for grabs. I think so. Wapak lost a lot of guys, yeah. but they return a lot. Travis Moyer, he just wins, you know. Uh, Kenton, they had a great year last year. It went 0-2. Everybody thought, oh, my, man, we can't win without Mike Mock. Well, Brent Fackler won 11 in a row and went deep into the playoffs. They'll be good again. They're always good. They got that sophomore quarterback that's a junior now. He'll be that much better. I think OG is going to be solid from top to bottom. After not making the playoffs last year, they want to get back to that. Anytime you got Doug Fry at St. Mary's, he's going to be good. All right, so you better watch out for him. Five and five, he's, he's going to win more than that this year. And if you're looking for a surprise, I've heard a couple of coaches say, watch out for Van Wert. Three and seven last year, they got 78 guys out for football. Keith Recker's done a great job of turning that thing around, getting excited over there. They, they come out early and win a few they could be reckoned with later in the year. A lot of those guys played on the baseball team in the spring. Oh, fat, had, yeah, had a great year. And great summer year. ball, too. They had right. a great summer ball. Team. So they're used to winning at this point, and yep. I think the, this senior class feels like this could be the year for yeah. Van Wert. So that's an intriguing storyline mm -hmm. to watch with no, without a doubt. Yeah. How about the Northwest Conference? This, <laughs> oh, I, like last year, I remember sitting here with you yeah. about, what would you say, almost a year ago now, a little, mm -hmm. little less than a year ago, and we had no idea what was going to happen in the yeah. NWC the entire year. Jefferson ended up winning the last mm -hmm. week of the season. They uh -huh. defeated Spencerville for yeah. the league crown. Yeah. How is it going to play out? It was year? a great league. Great I mean, league. you know, every, a lot of teams at the top, a lot of teams, I think, four into the playoffs. Yep. And you got to look at the, the defending champs again. Chris Summers and Jefferson, you know, they're, they're going to be good again. And watch out for Spencerville. Yeah. I mean, you know, John Zerby is a very humble guy. But he has to admit, to be honest, or else he'd lie to you, we're loaded. we got a lot of good players. And he has maybe the MVP in the area was Zach Goaty. I mean, that kid can do everything. And uh, Grove's going to be good again. If you're looking for a dark horse, maybe Allen East. Yep. You know, they've got it going. Uh, Abby's got the thing turned a little bit. They're excited. They've had two really good scrimmages against quality teams. If they can carry that over and stay healthy, they could be a, a team that's up in the top of the league at the end. Definitely looking at Allen East. They had great energy at their practice. And mm -hmm. as you said, Goki, he led the league, the NWC, last year in rushing. I would expect him to do that again. Yeah, they'll run it a few times yeah, over there with Coach Zerby. Senior yeah. year, so yeah. that should be good exciting to yeah. watch. Now, how about the track? We haven't mm -hmm. talked about Lima Senior yet, but 
Last year, they were the rock stars. Mike Fell mm. said it himself. <laughs> they were the rock stars of yep. the area. They started 8-0. They lost their last two and then lost in a week 11. So a, a down finish. Yeah. But it was such a positive year, and they're returning a lot of skill guys. Great year. They, they played their best two teams in the league last two games, and to lose to them is nothing to be ashamed of. And then they had that playoff game one, and it just got away from them. So that's not indicative of what that team was like. But you return all-league quarterback, all-league receiver, a couple other great receivers. Uh, a running back that you know just happened to play behind Janiel Lyles. Yeah. You know he's really good. Uh, they fill in some holes on the defense because they lost a lot of good players on defense. Um, you know Toledo Central Catholic got to give them the nod because of the defending state champs. Whitmer's always good. Finley could get up in there, but you got to think Lima Senior's got as good a chance as anybody in that track to come away with their very first track championship. The track has a lot of good athletes, oh, and Ruben man. Flowers, who yeah. will be going to Pitt next year, is mm -hmm. right there at the top. Excited to yeah. watch him play. Yeah. And the Spartans have never won a track title, right. period. I don't believe yeah. in any sport. Yeah. So it feels like well, this could if be it's going to happen, yeah. this football team might be capable. Yeah, I, I think so. And one thing we know is they're going to be fun to watch. Yes. The, the, the scoreboard, that new scoreboard, yeah. we'll find out if the bulbs are good because right. they're going to be lighting it up. All right, let's go to the NWCC, another mm -hmm. interesting league that kind of has that wide open field. Yeah. A lot of teams returning guys. You know, you got Perry, you got Waynesfield, mm -hmm. you got Ridgemont, you got teams like that. And then, of course, the mm -hmm. top of the league recently has been Warmie and Lehman Catholic. So, mm -hmm. where, where, are we, where is this league going to Well, I think out? you start with the guys that are always in the playoffs. That's Fort Warmie and Lehman Catholic. They go both coming off playoff years and good, solid teams, good coaching staffs. Uh, you know, Fort Warmie changes around again, but a real solid staff again. Um, you know, I like what Waynesfield Goshen did. You know, they're down on players. You know what that coaching staff did with the blessings of their administration? They went door to door to every high school boy and asked them to play football. Added 12 guys to the team, and now they got decent numbers. So give credit to those guys. That's a lot of hard work to, to get their team built up. And then look at USV. They're, they're, they're getting better. They're coming. It might be a year that they break out over 500 and, and, and have something to say about that league. They've been four and six the last three years. They seem ready to make yes, that do. next step and, and yep. compete for the league title as yep. well. How about the GMC? I mean, Wayne Trace, mm -hmm. amazing year two years ago now. Yep. Last year, they lost to Tenora. Mm -hmm. And then you've got, you know, Tenora's probably Very the favorite good. in that yeah. league. And then yeah. Edgerton and Ayersville, some other teams. Where do we see Wayne Trace fitting into that? Well, I, I, Wayne Trace lost a lot of good players again. I saw him in a scrimmage last Friday over, over at Elida, and, and, and they compete. They're well coached. Uh, they got a couple of really good players. Uh, but they don't quite have the size that they've had in the past. Uh, so it, it might be a, an early season build for them. Uh, the Rams, Tenor, they're very good, you know, and, and uh, you, just, you just don't know. Ayersville and those others, they, they could have that great group of athletes coming up. You just don't know because they haven't done it yet. Yeah. But uh, again, yeah, I think a wide open league, but you got to give the nod to Tenor and Wayne Trace uh, kind of chasing them, I think. How about the BBC? Let me just tell you something about the BBC because they're in the Blanchard and the Valley Divisions for one more year. Then next year, that'll they'll revert back to one big league. But mm -hmm. Liberty Benton won the Blanchard side last year. They went 10-0 and 0 mm -hmm. in the regular season. They haven't lost a regular season game in almost three years <laughs> to Macomb. I don't remember the specific date. I think it, it was September the 8th. 2012 against Macomb was their last yeah. regular season loss. So they're the favorites. No? Oh, they're good. Yeah. They're, and they got beat by Coldwater yeah. in the playoffs. Right. They're very, very good. They got Nathan Kraft back at quarterback. Three-year starter. A big old dude. He's good, really good. Uh, they'll, be, they'll be great. They'll be fine again. Uh, Van Buren coming off their dream year has no reason to think they can't repeat that. You know, they played 12 games a year ago. They want to play 13, 14 this year. Uh, Macomb is good. Yeah. You know, they're really good. Uh, Chris Algy, they're big. They're strong. Um, he always has enough offense to score points. Arlington has been very good. That is a really tight at the top league. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, whoever plays each other early in the season, getting that win might win them a championship at the end. A lot of intriguing storylines yeah. in that league. Mm -hmm. And you, you mentioned McComb. They'll have the biggest test going up against Marion oh. Local week one. So what a Mac, great opener, huh? Let's preview the MAC. And yeah. Those three defending state champs, of course, mm -hmm. you got to look to them again. Mm -hmm. But Marion Local is going to have a challenge with Macomb week one. They will. They will. And Minster and Fort Lormery is always yeah. a tough battle, especially with old coach Whit Parks coaching against them and, and Coldwater Kenton. I mean, those three state champions, they don't, they don't go in the back door. No. I mean, they play some people in those two non-league games, and then they play against great players. They're, they're great teams the rest of the eight games. So you look at those three, and then Fort Recovery, they had that breakout year last year. They think they can repeat. 
Uh, it's just so good in that league. You don't even talk about St. John's because they were four and six and made the playoffs. They're a playoff team. Right. They're pretty good to get in a playoff. So that's a great, Saint great Henry league. Versailles. St. Henry was off to a great around. start line. St. Henry beat a state champion, didn't win the league. Yeah. Didn't get in the playoffs. Right. You know, so that's that's a heck of a league. And uh, you just love to watch, look back and, and see those games because they're always well played and well coached and not a place for the faint hearted. Because right. they play football down there, baby. Absolutely. <laughs> well, we're ready for football. Week one is just days away. So we've got a great broadcast schedule coming your way, which we'll take a look at in just a moment. But first, mm -hmm. I want to hear some games that you're looking yeah. forward to week one. And we'll stay away from our broadcast games okay. for now. And right. then we'll, hit, we'll let everybody know what we're going to show. Well, you know, Fort Loramie Minster, we mentioned that, and that's got the, the great buildup with Whit Parks having coached at Minster, now at Fort Loramie. Fort Loramie being in a playoff six years in a row. Minster having the, the dream year last year. They got Josh Nixon. I think he's the best throwing quarterback in our area. He has a great Agreed. arm. Yeah. I mean, he, he got into those playoffs last year, and, and nobody could touch him. Now, Eli Wolf was the benefit factor of that because he was throwing it to him, but I think that's going to be a great game. I think uh, spencerville Lipsick could be a really good game. We talked about Spencerville and how loaded they are and very deep they are. Well, Lipsick's been in the playoffs six years in a row, you know, so they know how to win and we win big games and get points. Whoever wins that game is going to get a lot of points. Uh, Winford, Liberty Benton, even though Winford is Bucyrus, not in our area, yeah. that is a great matchup. Playoff team oh, last year. Oh, yeah, and they, you know, especially – you know, when, when coach from Wapak was over there for several coach years, Meyer, yeah. yeah, they, they just win you know, like 10 and 0 every year. And yep. Liberty Benton's been 10 and 0 a couple of years in a row. So that could be another good one. Locally, uh, two, four and sixes that are kind of intriguing, Delphi St. John's and Bath, yep. you know, uh, I, I think, you know, that, that could be very competitive. Both teams sure. have goals to, to be yeah. better than four Yeah, they and want six, to get so a winning we'll, record. Right. And this is important for them because this is their only, this is the only non-league game for Bath and one of two for South St. John. So those are some of the games I think would be really good to watch this I weekend. also circled Salina Versailles, yeah. Ada USV, yeah. a rivalry game, Grove PG, a rivalry game, mm -hmm. Arlington Anna. We've got our fill here to choose yeah. from. And yeah. you can see highlights from almost every one of these games on the Sports mm -hmm. Report Friday night, 10 p.m. Now let's get you to our broadcast schedule. These are the five games that you can see on the Family of Networks from week one. And it gets started Friday at 9 p.m., Napoleon versus Defiance, the River Rock rivalry. You'll be on the call, yep. I believe, right? I yes. will. Yep. I'm looking forward to that. Friday at 11 p.m., WOSN, Kenton versus Coldwater. And then 11 p.m., WTLW, LCC versus Elida. And then a pair of games for you on Saturday. Starts at 7 p.m. with Delphus Jefferson against Shawnee. And then Saturday at 9 p.m., you can see that Marion local Macomb game we were just chatting about. So lots to look forward to. Can't wait to, it's great to be back and yep. can't wait to get the season underway. Time and we'll to do be, it. We'll be here for the next couple of months to help break it all down for you. That's going to do it for this edition of Mark's Madness. Thank you to Mark Miller. I'm Matt Finkel. We'll see you next time on WOSN. Enjoy week one.